Yo, what is up, you guys, and welcome to another video. My name is Benji, and this is week number 40 of Investing on the Robinhood app. So we are 40 weeks into this journey, which is absolutely awesome, absolutely crazy. Shout out to all you guys that have been here for a while, as well as all the new people. The stock market is going pretty crazy today. I made a ton of new plays, a ton of new option trades, actually, which we're going to go through here in a second. We do have a ton to get through, though, so let's get right into it. The portfolio currently today is up just around $900 as of this moment. We are around halfway through the trading day, so we'll see what happens from here on out. We're up 0.41%, sitting at $221,512 and some change over the last day. Over the last week, we're down 700 and some change, down 0.32% over the last week. The last month, we're down $1,265, down 0.57% over the last month. The last three months, we're actually up 4,200 and some change. We're up almost 2% over the last three months. And then for the last year or all time, since we did start this portfolio just around 40 weeks ago, we are down 8,400 still, just under 4%. Next, you guys, let's take a look at all the options trades we have going on currently. We do have quite a new ones as of today. This put that we sold with Realty Income at a $57.50 strike price. This one expires this Friday, so we will see what happens with this one. Realty Income has been trading pretty low, so it is likely that this one might be exercised. We will have to wait and see with that. Next, we sold some cover calls to earn some free premium, of course. The first one was with Wells Fargo. This one expires this Friday also. The strike price at $31.50 is way far away from where Wells Fargo is trading at right now. Wells Fargo is currently trading around like $25 or something. But I did want to sell this one to earn a little bit of premium. But we were able to earn $28 in premium from selling this cover call with Wells Fargo. The banks are going to be having earnings this week, so there is going to be a lot of volatility in the bank space. But I figured, let's just pick a strike price really far away from Wells Fargo. to earn some premium, of course, but not necessarily sell for sure if Wells Fargo does of course show up in price I wouldn't mind holding on to it it's not my favorite bank as you guys know but I do own a lot of shares of Wells Fargo so we did sell some covered calls and we will of course have to see what happens with this one Next, we sold a covered call with JP Morgan. Same story here. Earnings is coming tomorrow, I think. So the, the premium that you could earn was absolutely crazy also. So we, we sold one covered call with JP Morgan at a $123 strike price, which is pretty crazy because JP Morgan is in at $97 and some change right now. So this is, this is way, way far away from the share price. We were able to earn eight bucks. And the reason why I didn't pick a strike price closer to the actual share price of JP Morgan is because if JP Morgan's earnings look better than expected and the prices go up, I wouldn't necessarily want to get rid of my JP Morgan. I really like JP Morgan out of all the other banks. So I figured I will sell a covered call but i want to be far enough away to make it really worthwhile for me so so that's why i did pick a strike price so far away but we were able to still earn some premium and the next options play that we made we sold covered calls on at&t at a 32 dollars strike price also expiring this friday this was for three contracts so all together we were able to earn six dollars in premium and again not the most premium in the world but it's pretty far away from the share price right now and at&t doesn't move all that much all that often especially after the ex-dividend day which just kind of passes right now so I, so I don't really think this is going to be exercised but if it does of course we'll earn some nice profits but overall this is the beauty of having over 100 shares that you can just sell cover calls through options trading pretty consistently and the next play I made was the same exact one that we made last week that expired worthless with CenturyLink, a $10.50 strike price. We were able to earn four bucks in premium for this for selling two contracts, which again isn't all that much, but CenturyLink does not move up in price all that much that often. So for CenturyLink to move up to $10.50 or above, to of course force me to sell my shares, it's kind of unlikely by this Friday in my opinion. But anything can happen and I would be more than willing to sell my CenturyLink at $10.50, you know, worst case scenario. And the final options play that we made today was, of course, with the SPY ETF. This is the big boy here. I have officially been running the SPY wheel now for about a week, you guys, and it's been going really good so far. As of last week, we are two for two with not having our sold puts be exercised. Of course, we still do have the cash. Last week, we earned a total of $49, which I, of course, bought half Microsoft and half Apple, which I'll show you guys here in a second. And then today, we did sell another put. We were able to earn $31 of premium, which is pretty good. Our strike price is at $312, and the SPY is currently trading around $321, so we are pretty far away from the share price of the SPY. But in today's stock market, anything can and will happen, honestly, so it wouldn't be that surprising to me if we do get exercised on one of these pretty soon here. But overall, so far, we were able to earn $80 of premium from trading the SPY wheel, which is pretty cool. And I, of course, like I said, I buy half Microsoft, half Apple. So I'm literally just starting a position on both of Apple and Microsoft and just growing the position from just the premium that we're earning from the spy wheel, which is pretty awesome. And with this spy put, we have a few days to see what will happen. This does expire on 715. So in a few days, of course, we'll see what happens if we are stuck with the shares and we'll go from there and we'll sell covered calls. And of course, if the option is not exercised, then we'll just do this all over again and just keep earning premium. So, so far, so good. Between all these option plays today, I did make a few new buys. I bought one more share of Realty Income at $56.95. Realty Income is really getting beat up right now with some uncertainty with people being able to pay rents and renewals. And with Realty Income Forward yielding around a 5% dividend yield, um, this is definitely going to be one that I'll be buying more of. Then I grabbed one more share of AT&T. I just bought one more share because that was my 300th share of AT&T, so I was able to sell covered calls. 
because of course you need 100 shares to be able to do so. So I grabbed one more share of AT&T quickly. And then of course with my free premium from the spy wheel, I was able to grab 1550 of Microsoft and 1550 of Apple. So again, it feels really nice to be adding to my position for both of these with really like free money. And then today, as far as buys go, I just grabbed two more shares of Coke at 45 29 per share. And then I grabbed three more shares of Realty Income at $57 flat. And next, I want to show you guys all the dividends that are currently pending in my portfolio as well as been paid out. And this might be the most exciting part of this video because these dividends are getting absolutely huge, which is super, super cool. As we scroll down, you guys will see some new ones in here. We have an AT&T one for $152.36, which is absolutely awesome. That's by far the biggest one I've gotten from AT&T as of yet. And then Verizon, we have the absolutely monster $335.18, which is so cool. I mean, between these two dividends, we were able to buy like, you know, maybe half a week or a week worth of more dividend stocks, which is my goal with this portfolio. I really want to get it to a point where the dividends that are being paid to me on a consistent basis can afford me to constantly invest into more stocks. So this was the goal overall from this portfolio. And we are starting to make some real money with this portfolio, which is absolutely awesome to see. Next, you guys, let's come over here on my M1 Finance portfolio. This is my smaller portfolio that's made up of growth tech stocks. The portfolio is currently valued at $912.37. We still have over $235 of cash balance also. So this portfolio has went up almost $140 in value over the last week, week and a half since I started this portfolio. And we are up 25.91%, which is absolutely crazy in this portfolio. So I so I did make one new purchase in this portfolio, which will be coming in tomorrow. I added NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is one that you guys were commenting a lot about, saying that I should add to this portfolio, saying that it would fit in pretty well. And I totally agree with you guys. So I did buy $50 worth of NVIDIA that will be in here tomorrow during the next trading window. But other than that, I have to say the portfolio is still looking very, very good. I mean, Tesla is easily leading the way by far. I mean, the small amount of money that we do have in Tesla even still is really running up the overall value of this portfolio. But I have to keep in mind that value and growth stocks are very different overall. And honestly, it's really fun to have a portfolio of each. I will be adding more money to this portfolio pretty soon here when we are out of the cash balance also. All right, you guys, and next we do have to pick this stock for this week's free cash giveaway. If you, guys, if you guys aren't already familiar with how this works, every week in my portfolio, we pick our random stock in my portfolio. We buy one share of the stock, and then however much the stock goes up or down by Friday's video, I then gift that amount in cash to one of you guys. All you have to do to win is just make sure you guys like all my videos. Make sure you guys comment often and make sure, of course, you guys are subscribed. So next, let's go ahead and pick the number for this week. Let's pick on one, two, three. All right, so this week is number five. All right, you guys, this week's stock is Enterprise Products, so let's go ahead and buy one share of this. All right, you guys, so there we have it. We bought one share of EPD at $17 flat, so we'll have to come back on Friday and see how much this one moved. Good luck to all you guys. All right, you guys, now before I go today, let's answer some viewer questions and comments. If you guys ever do have any questions or comments for me, make sure to leave them down below. It could be about investing, business, real estate, anything at all, or just leave something down below. The first one today is from Hosef, looking to get into selling contracts soon. Do you recommend starting with selling puts or calls? When it comes to selling contracts, of course, if you want to sell calls, you are going to need to have 100 shares of whatever stock it is because 100 shares, of course, equals one contract. So if you don't already have 100 shares or anything, you probably will want to start off with selling puts. And what you can do is sell puts and earn premium until maybe you are going to be assigned those 100 shares of whatever puts you're selling. And then once you are assigned that, you can, of course, go on the other side and then you can sell calls. Basically, the exact same way that I'm running the wheel currently. Now, on the other hand, if you already own 100 shares of whatever stock it is and you do want to start selling calls in it, you can, of course, go ahead and do so because you already own the 100 shares, so you're pretty much ready to go. The next one's from Raj. Your M1 Finance growth portfolio just shows how important it is to balance of dividend and growth stocks. Your example illustrates it perfectly. We'll definitely love to see a video on your real estate ventures in the near future. Good luck with your newest investment. So Raj, I 100% agree with you on the dividend versus growth portfolio. It is almost kind of hard to see because I've worked so hard in this dividend portfolio and it just is not growing in the pace that the growth one is, of course, grown at. But at the same time, growth and value do have two totally different places in the market. So I have to keep that in mind. And honestly, it is good, like you said, just to have a balance of both. And as far as my new real estate project, I would love to share that with you guys. I will be making a video on it pretty soon here. I want to go over what I just purchased, the numbers, how I plan to rent it out, the cash flow off it, the renovations, and everything else. So if you guys if you guys do want me to go more in depth on the real estate thing, definitely leave a comment down below and let me know. And the last one is from Underfine. Which IRA is best, traditional or Roth? And what is a SEP IRA good for? So when it comes to IRAs and which IRA is best for you, I would say that this is really more of a tax question. It really depends on how much money you make, what the benefits are of both. And the easiest way to know more about this is, of course, talking to a licensed CPA or a tax professional. When it comes to my situation, there is an IRA that is the best bet for me, which I will be going over soon here because I am going to start my IRA on TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim. And I'll, of course, take you guys through that entire process. But overall, it just has a lot to do with your own situation and a tax professional would definitely be able to help with that. But that is going to do for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much, as always, for stopping by. Please, please drop a like on the video if you guys like the video. Leave a comment or question down below for tomorrow's video. Also, you guys, make sure to subscribe if you guys haven't already to follow along with the journey. We have a lot of big things coming here. I promise you guys that. As well as, of course, if you guys are subscribed, like my videos and comment off, and you, of course, will be entered in every single Friday's cash giveaway.
And finally, if you guys haven't already, make sure to join the Discord. It's free to join. The link is down below in my description. We have over 1,300 people now in the Discord, which is absolutely crazy. Tons of brilliant minds in here giving insight on investing, business, all kinds of things. So if you guys haven't already, make sure to join the Discord, and we'll see you in there. As always, thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.